Welcome back, everybody. It's time for another episode of Closing the Wealth Gap. The only show that gives you real tips and ideas and stories. People struggling just like you. With a man who's seen it all, been there to help many. Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Hey, Paul. How are you today? Well, I'm struggling. My voice is, uh, we'll see if it's going to hang in there for the show here, but it's that time of year when I get colds and horse and whatnot. Is it always, always happens to me at the end of the year like this too. So I wonder, is it something about the time of year or uh, am I just getting overloaded with uh, all the stuff coming at me here? Well, the weather's changing. You know, we had this rain, Got had all these, all these fires and all this smoke, all this pollen, all the, all, all the, 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 the rain and everything. And then, you know, so things are changing. Well, and season changing, and I think it has something to do about this time of year. As a boy, my dad would always make it a deal to use this time to look back. How'd you screw up, son? What what could you have done better? He always thought of it in a negative term here. <laughs> so maybe I'm just scared of this time of year, and I, it's like the all the negativity uh, comes out. I I got a chance to to change the world and become a new person next year somehow. Well, you know, it, it is the season. It, you know, they say this is the, 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 the most wonderful time of the year. It's around December, Christmas. It can be, but it can also be the of awful time of the year. It's very stressful. Yeah. Very stressful. So take care of yourself, buddy. All right. Take well, care. I am. I'm, so I'm going to let you take a little more lead here today because my voice is uh, strengthening. And, and your voice has been growing in this show, and I want it to continue that way. I, you, I know your audience wants it to continue that way. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about something that it's, it's a secret taboo, and it's, it's network marketing. And, but, but before I get into that, though, uh, I was trying to figure out and trying to ask myself, how do I offer, how do I bring more value uh, to the listeners? You know, because people are, they're, they're you know, the, the time that they're spending listening to this podcast, to this show, they're never going to get that time back. And so I just want to make sure that I'm offering something that's useful, something that they can apply, and, and something that's, that's valuable, um, something that they can take away, take away with, and something that's going to work in their life. All right. Well, so, I'll, tell you what you, I'll tell you what I'm going to ask for every time that you do one of these shows. Maybe the audience will agree. We'll get some feedback. Start by telling me a story. Tell me a story that brings the point into view or from your life or your friend's life or somebody else's life or your guest's life. If we could, stories are what, what, what we all crave these days. And out of the story, there's some wisdom. And then at the end, you can give us some facts and figures of how to, how to fix things. I mean, so maybe it's, you start by telling the, telling the, uh, the problem. What's the problem we want to address today? And then tell me a story about it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're, we're all here in a nutshell as far as trying to, to, to help each other. Yes. You know, do unto others, you would have them do unto you. Treat people the way you want to be treated. So I, I, I do. I have a story for you. All right. Uh, I heard this story about um, uh, heaven and hell. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's, it's not a long story, but, um, you know, I, I'll keep it as, as brief as possible. But it's but a story about heaven and hell. And uh, Stories don't have to be quick, you know. we got 30 minutes here. I love good <laughs> stories. Well, in the, in, the, in the heaven side, it was a lot of noise. You had two doors. One said heaven, one said hell. And it was in the heaven side, you thought it would be like, you know, calm and, you know, like relax the harp music and everything. But right. no, they were they were in their party and having a great time. Really? Okay. And so the issue was that. They're in, having a hell of a good time in, in the heaven in, side. Yeah. In the hell side, it was like it was dead silence. Mm. You know, no torture, no, no grimacing. No screaming. No, no screaming. It was, it was, so when you opened up the door to the heaven side. It was like, and both, 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 both um, channel, both heaven and hell were identical, and it was a long banquet table, and every kind of food that you could ever imagine was on this table, mm. and so you had the table settings and the beautiful flowers, and the colors weren't just colors; you could actually feel the colors. They were actually singing. All the food was just the most, the most delicious food that you could ever imagine. And both on both sides. both heaven and hell. All right. So when you went to the hell side, again identical settings, food, the colors, mm. everything was just beaming. So the difference was that the people in heaven and the people in hell, they had these arms that were made of spoons and forks, and they were seven oh. feet long. Okay. So. On the hell side, again, same thing. They had these arms, spoons, and forks seven feet long. The difference, Paul, is that the people in the heaven side, they realized that in order to, to take up this banquet, to eat up this feast, because their arms were so long, they couldn't use that seven-foot fork and spoon in front of them 
to eat. So what they had to do was reach across the table and feed the other person. And the people in hell didn't figure that out. So they sat there and they were literally starving to death. In the midst of the bounty. In the midst of the bounty and couldn't figure out that all we had to do was reach over the aisle and help somebody. Wow. And that that made all the difference in the world. That's what you're trying to do with this show that's, and so many others, yeah. And again, that's what, uh, with me trying to add value, uh, we're, we're here to help one another. And I'm here to share the knowledge and the experience that I've gathered to whereas maybe you don't have time. you don't make, Maybe you don't have uh, the wherewithal. Maybe you don't have the, the patience sometimes to try to figure out some of this stuff. Whereas I want to offer a show to whereas, hey, you were thinking about this. Here's another alternative. Here's an option. And take a look at this resource. Take a look at this website. Take a look at this app to whereas now you can actually have access to this information. I, I, let me feed you wow. until you're able to feed yourself. I like that. So what do you want to feed us today? What's the, what's the uh, bountiful uh, uh, feast that's before us that we can't see, that we can't partake in? I tell you what, this morning uh, I got a text message from a client of mine. And his question was like, well, how, based because everybody's looking at the television, you know, the S&P 500 is, is tanking right now. Stock yeah. market is tanking. And people are worried about their their retirements. They're worried about their 401ks. For those listening in the future, we're taping this in December of 2018 here. A rather tumultuous time for the market. Yes. So I get a text message and the guy wants to know, well, you know, my 401k is taking. And, and, you know, let's say I start taking money out of my 401k. uh, When I start taking money out for retirement, uh, how is that money going to be taxed? Yeah. And so uh, the guy's named Vincent. And um, he's he's from uh, Marlboro, uh, Maryland, and uh, and I knew it was, I knew it was, I knew he was from Mar- uh, Marlboro, Maryland, but I didn't really think about putting two and two together. I said, "So you're actually you're literally the Marlboro the Marlboro man. <laughs> the Marlboro man." <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was a Marlboro, Maryland. Yeah, but um, anyway, the, uh, you know, I kind of digress a little. But but again, uh, the issue was that well, how people are worried about their four hundred and one k's, and they're thinking about retirement and they're thinking about running out of money, and because everything is so volatile, they may start out with a certain amount in retirement, but then that's not what they're going to end up with. No. Then they're going to have to pay all these fees and all these taxes. So coming in today, I was thinking, it's like, well, there's another, there's a secret out there. There's a, there's a secret uh, business uh, platform that's kind of taboo, and a lot of people don't think about it, or if they do think about it, uh, they've been turned off by their friends and relatives, but it's, it's called network marketing. Oh, no, that's that's a bad one. And matter of fact, I even had a guest on my one of the shows. He was saying that you know network marketing is something that a lot of people don't they don't they don't succeed in it. And you mean like Amway and those kinds of things, multi level marketing, multi level marketing, or or uh, Mary Kay or whatever. Yeah, right. But here's the thing, Paul. I have a network marketing company that I've been associated with for about 14 years. Uh, this company has been in business over 40 years, and I'm not going to plug the company. It's not a shameless plug or anything, but I believe in this investment philosophy so so with with all of my being because the returns that i'm getting and case in point i had a stockbroker uh through linkedin and okay. he wanted to communicate with me and the guy said well hey look if you invest you know a thousand dollars a month into this program then you know and we can't you know we can't project how much money you're going to get back we can't we can't do that yeah, but sure. you know on average the stock market is like a 10 percent return and i said well that's that's fine. I said, but let's say I take a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars and I put that money back into my own business and I turn around oh. and I get a hundred percent return in thirty days. And not only that, but I control those dollars and I'm not paying any fees to do that. And those dollars might produce more dollars. It's not just an investment in your business continues to grow. You're feeding your, your business, you're feeding yourself. Uh, an investment in a fund might have a, an annuity, a rate that it goes up, but and it might, yes, I know it might multiply over time, compound interest and stuff, but you're not necessarily changing the trajectory of that company. Or but the, the but the issue was that he didn't have a comeback for it. Yeah. And so what he did was just hit come old flush and like next because it's, it's a number game for these guys. Yeah. So right. so the next. Part, right. Oh, you're gonna ask your question next. Right. So the so the so the issue was. If you take control, if you if you manage your own money, you start managing your own finances, you you become creative based on the return that you're looking for. 
So again, what people are looking at today is they're they're concerned about their retirements. They're concerned that hey, look, I'm work. I've been working on this job for 20, 30 years. Amen. Number number one fear we all have as we get old. I'm an aging baby boomer. Is I'm going to live longer than I've ever thought. Well, how am I going to pay for it? And so the two motivators are fear and then greed. So if you start looking at your time horizon, thinking that you don't have a whole lot of time left, right. then you're going to try. You're going to try to find certain type of vehicles or investments that's giving you the greatest return for your money because you don't have a whole lot of money and you don't have a whole lot of time. So you want to maximize it. But when you do that, you assume more risk. That's what I was going to say. I, I want to make up for lost time, but I can't gamble wildly because I can't afford to lose. Right. So let me tell you why I got started with network marketing. Okay. And again, I'm not really, I'm not trying to push this on anybody. And then tell me what, why do you feel so strongly about it? What, what is it about it that works for you and might work for others? Robert Kiyosaki wrote this book and it's called The Business of the 21st Century. Okay. So that's the same guy that did Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. I'm a great fan of Robert Kiyosaki. As a matter of fact, my book, uh, Closing the Wealth Gap, I dedicated it to Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, because he, he's the one that really kind of opened my eyes. Actually, let me go, let me take a little bit further back. Okay. There was a guy named Charles Givens. I don't know if you've ever heard of Charles Givens. I've never heard of, no. This was back in the, uh, the late 70s, uh, early 80s. He wrote this book called um, Wealth Without Risk. Well, it wasn't without too much risk because the guy ended up going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little but, risk for somebody. Yeah, but, 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 and it, I think he got caught like tax evasion or something like that. But that's that's not the, the, the point I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is that he put out this book and he was talking about sales, direct sales. And at the time, I had just gotten, gotten out of the military and I was working for um, this big aerospace company in Long Beach. And I was quality assurance administrator, making great money. But, Paul, I hated my job. <laughs> I hated what I did. Yeah. And I would wake up in the morning just with this ugh, in my stomach that I got to go and spend eight hours doing something that I literally hated. So I got this book, uh, Wealth Without Risk, and they were talking about business and, and investments, and, and one of the chapters was talking about direct sales. So I started going to these workshops and going to these seminars about, um, you know, direct sales. Matter of fact, I ended up in a, a, a seminar one time for uh, fiber optics. Fiber optics. Wow, that sounds like the old... Uh I'm old enough to remember the movie The Graduate where he comes out of school and they say, okay, kid, what should you do? Plastics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That became a line for 20 years, you know, plastics. And let me tell you my, my uh, intelligence level back then. I was like, well, fiber optics, oh, that's, that's, that's never going to work. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah who, who would invest in something like that? Now everything, all communication is based on fiber optics. Yeah. So anyway, um, got into uh, direct sales. And when it came, I got to the point where I just had my aha moment when I just realized that I didn't need to be in this place anymore. So I ended up um, leaving this cushy job and I applied for a position with New York Life, New York Life Insurance Company on Wilshire Boulevard. And I got the got the position and uh, became an agent. And I remember I was on Wilshire Boulevard and I was standing, I was on the ninth floor and I looked out and it was like, wow, you know, I, I envisioned this. I finally, <laughs> I've I finally, arrived. I've arrived. Um, but a lot of times you, you, you get the vision, but you don't see uh, the work behind it. No. Uh, and, but the thing is, because it's like I, watching a movie, you go to a movie and you say, that's a beautiful movie. What a great story. You don't realize the years it took to produce that. You don't that. see the backdrop. You don't see the sets. You don't see anything. Right. You know, you don't see all the mistakes that were made. They just, right. they're giving you a polished product. Yeah. They edit it all down to perfection. Exactly. So. Make a long story short, I found out not only did I have an aptitude for finance, um, but I totally, I absolutely love what I do. And I've been doing this over 20 years now, and I can't see myself doing anyth anything else. Um, but. And what, so I got to stop you. So what do you love about it? I love the fact that you can take it. Finance is really, it's a bunch of systems. And to be able to, to take to find somebody and solve that because people have you got the, the person you got this uh, the problem and you have the solution you're providing the service and then they're looking for the answer so they're, they're going to provide or give you a reward based on that service that you're providing and the thing is they they may people may consumers may have an idea of what they want 
but they don't have a conception of how to put it together. No, that's why they come to you. Yeah. That's why they come to us. So based so are on, you like the scientist that somehow gets to figure out this problem? Each and, each one is a unique problem, and you get to solve it? What I found, Paul, is every problem is really the same. Mm. Uh, it's just the individual that's different and how they, per- how they perceive the problem. So just like uh, you look at a, a product, I'm not going to mention any, any particular product, but you've got a product, um, and that product does one thing, and it does one thing only, and it does it well. But you may find somebody else that they have a situation, and they're trying to solve this situation, but they're never going to think about using that product. As a matter of fact, I'll just mention uh, uh, just like life yeah, insurance. Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. Let's, let's, you got to help me out. Let's say we say life insurance. Nobody right. wants to buy life insurance. Nobody. Nobody. That's the last thing. As a matter of fact, it's the hardest thing in the world to sell. Because you don't get anything out of it. It's after you die. It's for, it's for some day you don't even want to think about. Exactly. So what people are saying is that I want to solve this problem based on uh, I don't want to work. Uh, I have a hard time saving money. Uh, I don't want to work all of my life. Uh, I want to make sure that when I stop working, I have X amount of dollars coming in every single month. And then when I leave, I want to leave a legacy, uh, something to my family so that they don't have to take the responsibility to put me away. Everybody feels that. So you never talk about in that situation, you're using life insurance to solve that problem. But you're not talking about life insurance. Mm. What you're saying is that, hey, look, I'm a life insurance agent. Uh, We have whole life, universal life term and blah, blah, blah. Based on what you just told me, uh, there's a product called uh, Whole Life Insurance or Universal Life. If you want to save money with you just making the premium payments, it creates an automatic savings plan, which is called cash value in the policy. Now, again, you're not really con- con- um, communicating all this to the client. You just know that there's a product out there that's going to that's gonna check off every box that they, they have. They list those, risk, list those again. What are the three or four things everybody wants? They, well, they, what they want, let's say they want a savings. They want to establish themselves a savings plan. Can't save. You're they want to save. They want to make sure that when they stop working, they have an income stream coming in for retirement. Annuity, right? They want to make sure that uh, when they pass away, they leave. It's called a legacy. They want yeah. to make sure that they they they're not leaving leave that financial behind. burden on their family. Right. So the only product that can do that. Oh, and also by the way, when they start the product or when they start their plan, they want it to materialize immediately, meaning that they want it to self-complete. Hmm, now you got me on that. I'm not sure what that means. When you start a 401k or an IRA or whatever it is, you're thinking about 20 years down the road. So right. you want to make sure that that plan is going to be there 20 years down the road. Right. So are they already thinking that their plan is completed? Hmm. When somebody, let's say somebody puts down, uh, they're paying $500 a month for an IRA or 401k. And let's say they died after two months. Well, that IRA or 401k is going to have $1,000 in it if they did $500 a month. I see. Right. Let's say, again, it same, takes 20 years. It takes for 20 it years, 30 to years. Accumulate, right. Same thing, same scenario with a life insurance product, meaning that they, hit, they checked off all the boxes, but they want the plan to self complete. The only thing, the only product that can do that is a life insurance policy because when somebody passes away, it, can, it, it creates an immediate income tax free estate. Whether you've been paying for one month or 100 years. Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. So if I walked up to somebody and said, hey, look, I'm a life insurance agent and I got this all this life insurance and I want to sell you a life insurance policy. They'll say, hey, take a hike. I don't have time. I don't want to listen to you. Right. But when they start telling me what their problems are and I say, well, the solution to everything that you just told me is this life insurance product. It's this thing. You don't even This need thing to, right here. You don't have to know what it's called or anything, but I got a thing that can help you fix that problem. Right. So once they find out that is life insurance that we're talking about, then they start telling their brother, their sister, their cousin, everybody about this life insurance product that they have. And their family is the same thing. Hey, you know, I'm not interested in life insurance, but you got to listen to this guy. Well, because we all want to ensure that our life goes well, but we don't want something called life insurance because we have a perception of that that's negative. It's not sexy. It's not fun. It's not stimulating. It's not exciting. Nobody wants to talk about. So I want to ensure my life goes well. Why wouldn't I want to buy something called life insurance? It's just a negative. It's the negative condition that people have had actually been acclimated to. But anyway, that's not what I really, what I really want to talk about today. Well, that's an example of what I think you want to talk about today, which is network, which is network marketing, right? Which so, again, and I'm sorry, has a 
negative, negative connotation, connotation right. until people find out that it checks off every single block that they're looking for. So case in point, let's say if somebody wanted to buy, they want to invest in real estate. Okay. And so let's say they wanted to um, uh, get, have a duplex. And they were going to live in one one side of the duplex, and they were going to rent out the other side. Okay. Well, the first thing that they need to do is they need to buy the property. So let's depend on what part of the country they're in. And let's say if they had to come up with four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Now they got this property, and they're paying for the insurance and their taxes and everything. They got the mortgage on there, but they decide to rent out one portion of the duplex, which is actually going to pay the mortgage payment. Right. So let's say after every all their expenses and everything, they they cleared fifteen hundred dollars. Fast forward to network marketing. Most network, and again, it's in uh, Robert Kiyosaki wrote this book, The Business of the 21st Century. And when I read this book, it literally changed my life. Things lit up. It just lit up. Because for a small dollar amount, let's say less than $100, somebody can actually start a network marketing company. And network marketing, a multi level marketing, is based on be, people wanted to start a business. They want uh, they want to create wealth from that business, which they want to generate an income producing asset. And right. what that means is that you want to put something in place to where you have money coming in, whether you work or not. Right. That's what constitutes wealth. So one of the best ways to do that here in the 21st century is through network marketing. Because, again, let's say you put up one hundred dollars and now you, you're in business. Right. Now you're finding other people that not really necessarily want to buy your product or your service because when you talk about the Amways or the Mary Kays or right. a lot of times or the um, uh, Herbalife. Herbalife and things like That's that, people start talking about product. And what Robert yeah. Kiyosaki in his book was saying, well, it's not necessarily the product, it's the, it's the system that, that you're putting together. Let me make it a uh, case in point. When you really understand network marketing, the product sells itself. Because the product is what? The, the, the franchise opportunity, not a franchise, but the opportunity to open your own, own business? It's the opportunity to open your own business. But again, let's say you become uh, an affiliate with that particular pro, uh, with, that, with that company. And you paid your money. Now you're an you're affiliate. Now you buy the product. Like me, for me, I, I, I sell life insurance. Right. So life insurance is a product. Right. So when somebody buys that, that, that policy based on their needs, their individual needs, they're going to pay a monthly premium every single month just to get the benefit of having that policy or the peace of mind that if something were to happen, that's there. Clearly, that's the idea of insurance. You pay something today to cover something that might or might not happen tomorrow. Exactly. So everybody's not dying at the same time. So what happens to all those premiums that these, the insurance companies are collecting? It goes into a giant reserve. Yeah, right. And, so from, and they invest it. And mm -hmm. they invest it. And so what they do is they take a portion, of, depending on what kind of policy you have, they take a portion of that money and they give it back to the policyholders. It's called a cash value. Well, they call it a dividend. A dividend is nothing more than a return of premium, meaning that the excess premium that they didn't have to use for an expense ratio, oh, they give it back. That's interesting. I never really thought of it. So let me just see if I got this right. So big insurance company sells a bunch of life insurance policies. They project so many people are going to die and they're going to have to pay out this much money. They hopefully collect a lot more than they have to pay out. They That excess that they have, they can invest it and try and grow it. Yes. Or they can take some of it and return it back to the investors, basically, the people who are paying into this fund uh, to protect their life and others. Uh, and it's sort of like a dividend. It's a cash back. It's, That's we we, we, we outperform, so we're going to give everybody a little thank you, a little bit of your money back. Right. So the policy may have a, a, a guaranteed interest rate on there. Now, dividends or return of premiums, those are not guaranteed. But based on the track rate of, of the company, they can pretty much... Historically, what they've done, what right. they're going to do. So, go back to network marketing, where a lot of these companies, and you're looking at a product, and mm -hmm. people are buying these products to, to 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 actually to start their business. So, the issue is once they start their business and they have this product, they continue to pay on this product every single month. Now, if you're making, let's say you're you're spending twenty five dollars or thirty or fifty dollars a month for this product to do business. But if you're making 
five hundred, a thousand, five thousand dollars a month, then the cost of doing business to pay that fit that twenty five or that fifty dollars is automatically going to be taken care of, meaning that the person's not going to stop buying that product or they're not going to stop using that product. The customers that you're selling the to the customers that you're selling to because the money you're making money in the process. So you took a you took a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars to start a business which is tax deductible. Right. And then you build a base of customers. Now you build a base of customers based on, again, not trying to go out and find uh, five or ten people, but trying to find one person that wants to make some extra money, that wants to create wealth. What They want to create an income-producing asset where they have money coming in every single... That's the mindset that you're looking for. Right. You're not looking for somebody that want to make... Uh, they want to go out and sell stuff. Because most people don't like sales. Yeah, They're conditioned right, exactly. to hate sales. But here's the thing. Here's a secret. Everybody is a salesperson. You have to sell just to get your kids to go to sleep at a certain time <laughs> at night. Yeah, yeah. You have to sell. Some some wives have to sell their husbands to spend time with them to go to the mall yeah. with them. Yeah, I, she has to work hard on that one. Right. So the issue is, it's not, it's not the point that uh, most people, they... They buy the things that they really want, but they have to be sold to things that they need. Ooh, wait, say that one again. I like that one. M most people, most consumers, because we are consumers, because that's how companies look at us as consumers. Yeah, we're, we're a so, capitalist society here. We're all taught to consume. We right. want to consume. But you have people, people buy the things that they really want, but they have to be sold to things that they need. So that's why life insurance is one of the, it's one of the hardest things things to sell because a lot of people don't think that they need it they don't want it until they find themselves in a position to whereas it becomes a necessity well a want is something that you either have an immediate you know maslow's hierarchy of needs you know you yes. start with just being able to survive and and stay alive so you got to eat you got to shelter you got to food and then beyond that what do you do with the surplus well, the things that you want, the things that make you feel good, the things you aspire to to be like, the clothes, the cars, the other things that put a smile on your face. But the things farther off that are going to really affect your life or change your life, those are investments. And investments don't pay off immediately. And we're we're little kids, so we want an immediate they payoff. They want that immediate, that short term that short term gratification. Right. So kinda of look at it like this. A lot of people are buying, they're buying liabilities, things that are not going to put money into their pockets, but they, if they feel good. Right. Short term, they feel great it about it. It actually cost you money. You got to fix that car. You got to store these things. You got to do something with it, it, unless it's just a little simple item. The bigger it is, the more it's going to have an ongoing cost to you. That's right. But you have to be sold an asset. See, yeah. your house could be either liability or asset just based on how it's structured. But somebody sold it to you. Somebody and wow. and and they look at it. So they'll say, "This is my house. Is my biggest investment. It's my biggest investment." But somebody had to sell you on that idea, or sell you that property, or sell you on that mortgage. And they probably didn't sell it to you based on what, how much it would accumulate, and what its uh, annual return would be. Not their job. They sold it to you because the school is next door. Because it's a safe neighborhood. Exactly. Because there's a pie baking in the oven and you can picture yourself living here. It's an immediate gratification. And a lot of times that beautiful dream comes and it turns into a nightmare. So again, it goes back to that story as far as people, they, they, they spent all this money to buy this property to get $1,500 a month versus taking maybe 100 or $500 to start a business to create an income producing asset that's going to generate the same amount of income whether it's 15 1500 3000 whatever whatever it is whatever the income level that you're looking for just like I'm a businessman I'm a business owner my income is unlimited it's based on the amount of activity that I want to put in or based on the system that I put in place or how successful that system is and you are in and, and selling those things. Exactly. But I made sure, I made absolutely sure that my business is based on, uh, it's, it's a numbers game. I, I just operate a system. And my job is just to make sure that that system is in place. That's one of the reasons why I chose uh, insurance is because 
Most people, insurance, what can you do without insurance? Nothing. Can you drive a car? No, that's Can you own true. a home? My first answer was you said, I can do anything without any insurance. I can, but you definitely, no. You definitely want to get sick without insurance. Yeah. You don't want to have an operation without insurance. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to drive a car without insurance. I don't want to face that fact. I don't want to, the reality to be that I have to think of the future. I want to live for today, especially my generation. That was our whole mantra. Live for today. Live for the moment. But I think that's been our fear and our failing as we get older. We haven't planned for the future. We didn't realize how long we were going to live and what the cost of things were going to be. And now we're afraid that we've run out of time. And that's that, Paul, that's, it's a mindset. But again, there's an evolutionary process that's going on right now. We're in a, we're in a, the paradigm is shifting right now. It sure is. And people can feel it. They may not be able to articulate it, but they feel it in the air. They Poli- know that something is changing. Politically, physically, uh, economically, emotionally, emotionally climate-wise, whatever, everything around us seems to be changing. Yes, yes. So how do you evolve with that change? And like I said, nobody really wants to talk about it. It's a, ta- it's a taboo subject. But network marketing uh, is, is, again, I've been doing this for over 14 years. Uh, it's one of the best investments that I've ever made based on a return. We, we call it ROI, a return on your investment. Yeah, right. For a small upfront cost, you can literally change your life in a, in a matter of not just not thinking about 20 years of retirement, but you can actually with network marketing, realistically, you can retire in two to three years. Wow. Well, you have to come back and tell us more how, because that's uh, it's tantalizing. I'm not sure I quite get it or get over my objections to it, and I'd love to get some questions and have people uh, answer. Maybe that's it. Maybe they write into you and say, "Okay, I heard what you said. Now here's what I've heard." And he, he, answer this, all the this and is answer what all heard the negatives. And, and why? Why yeah. would I do this? And I've heard this. I heard that. But again, I want to create that dialogue because the name of the, the, my show is closing the wealth gap, and a lot of people they don't understand what wealth is so we have to define that for them so where can they write in or send you if they want to email a question Let, let's Go. do that let's do a follow-up segment and send in your questions send you've you've heard his pitch do you believe it if not what have you heard otherwise send let's, me an email at tyrone at tyronefrench.com that's tyrone at tyronefrench.com you can actually call my office 562-498-4316 or just go to www.tyronefrench.com, and the, the number one way to, way to reach me is through my app, www.tyronefrench.app. I would love to get, show you the numbers. I'd love to go, go through the dialogue with you and just show you that there's another alternative out there other than 401K, IRA, spending buy 20, stock. 30 years, buy stock, uh, with assuming all the risk. And not getting any of the rewards. There's another There's another way. Another way to close the wealth gap. That's yes. what we're here to tell you about. All right, that'll be a fascinating show. Let's have everybody send in some questions, and we'll do a follow-up show, and, and I'll read off the questions, and you answer them. They're gonna, they're gonna, we're going to put you on the hot seat, see if you can uh, change our negative thinking about network marketing. Looking forward to it. There is another way to close the wealth gap. That's what we're here to talk about. Ideas, information, real-life examples, how you can change your life. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net.